going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Today we're talking about how to set up your knife on a battle belt. Now there's a right way and a wrong way to do this in my opinion. There's many different ways to do this. Some guys you'll see like to carry a knife back here or back here. Some guys like to carry it right here like me. Some guys like to carry it right here and listen to each their own and I'm sure everybody's got a reason for what they do. But let me walk you through a few of the really kind of like roughly learned lessons that I've learned along the way. Uh, number one, I want to carry my knife on my support side, strong side, support side. Why? Right? Why do I want to carry it on my left side? Because if I'm a right hand dominant, wouldn't I want the knife on my right side so I can fight with the knife? Yes, if I'm only carrying a knife, I absolutely want it on my dominant side, on my strong side. If this is my primary weapon, then I'm going to want the knife on my right side. Like, for example, when I'm walking around with no weapon on me, only a knife, I keep it in my right pocket, okay? Because obviously I can access it and then I can fight with it. But if I have a weapon on me, and we'll talk about this more in the next part where we go into how to carry a knife for concealed carry, I'm usually gonna have that knife on the left side of my body. Reason being is number one and most, most forefront, if somebody discovers that I have this weapon or if somebody's close enough to me where I actually need to use a knife for deadly force, self-defense, then I'm already in close combat, right? <clears throat> so I don't wanna have to, have to, I'm sorry, wow, I lost train of thought. I don't wanna have to protect my weapon pin it into my holster, right? And also worry about then having to access a knife with the same hand. Why? Well, let's take a look at this. If I'm having to pin this here, right? Let's say I've got my arm out and they're already well within this OODA loop, right? They're well within my OODA loop. Now I'm gonna have to protect my weapon. If I'm looking to get my knife out of my right pocket or my right side, right? I have to switch, watch this. I have to switch and then pin this weapon with my left hand here. What the fuck, dude? If anybody knows anything about fighting and I'm putting this all the way here, what is this setting up for? So many different things. They can pin this, they can turn me, they can smack me in the temple in the head, they can get my neck, I'm, I'm wide open, not to mention the fact that they can pick me up and dump me, mat return, whatever you wanna call it. There's a lot that can go wrong from this, right? This is like a bad, it's just a bad position to be in for close fighting. So with that being said, I want the option to go ahead and just take them out real quick. Just stab them with a flower, right? And that's, it's as simple as that. We don't have to make it any more complicated than it, than it is, and it's not complicated. If your primary weapon goes down, you switch to your secondary. If for whatever your secondary weapon goes down or it's not accessible, you switch to your tertiary and you exploit vulnerable areas of the enemy. That's like the nicest way I can say it. And it's also like, it's that simple. There's nothing more complex about it than that. So why do guys put the knife on their, on the back side, right? Well, there's a reason that I figure guys do this, but in my opinion, again, it's a mistake because if we're going to be accessing a knife, we're already in a very close fight. We're already more than likely outside of even striking range, right? So more than, unless you're just such a shitty striker that you actually, you have to go for your knife right away. But usually it's like, we're really face to face kissing close, all right? So if we're already that close, I don't wanna be reaching back to grab a knife. And I get why people do that because they think that, oh, if I have the knife on my strong side, right? I'm going to be pivoting off, protecting my firearm, giving them my weak uh, support side, and then accessing my knife from here. But things don't always go down like that, right? Maybe I'm getting shoved up against the wall. I'm having to protect my weapon here. I'm not able to pivot and turn. And then I start reaching for a knife. Well, what does this open up? Anybody who knows jujitsu, Kimura, right? Kimura, whoa, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my, my shoulder just like jacked off. <laughs> not jacked off, right? If it's, I don't know, Asian girls? Anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm gonna get my shoulder jacked up. Like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really, that's gonna really suck if I'm having to reach back here and somebody's within grappling range on me and oof, then that's, that's just no good. And same thing with here, right? If it's on the back side here, like where I keep this mag, 
Some people, some guys will carry it back here. If you're having to reach back here and you're already in a close fighting situation, this is just not <laughs> a position that you want your arm in. You want everything tucked. You want everything tucked like this, right? And especially, look, my elbow is now also able to pin my firearm temporarily into my holster, okay? So I can have both hands up here to protect myself. So why do I, where do I put my knife if I don't put it back here? It's simple, I put it right here. And if somebody is this close on me, I'm just gonna take it out and start stabbing into them wildly. I'm not gonna like try to take it out and have a knife fight and all this. It's not, this, this is not that type of situation. And some guys will put it, instead of putting it like this, they'll put it like this or they'll put it like that. That's fine. And especially because you can access it with either hand, right? Let's just say for whatever reason, I'm not concerned about weapons retention. I can then access this uh, with this hand as well. Now, something that I want to really keep in mind is when I'm mounting this weapon, I want to have it as hidden as possible. Like, it doesn't need to be ninja hidden, but it needs to be, like, not visually... It needs to be not seen enough to where it sticks out. Because if I'm unarmed and I'm rushing at you, right, and I'm intent on taking you out before you take me out, I'm, I'm looking for weapons. I'm looking for them to use against you, right? And I know that if you have a sidearm, you're gonna be trying to pin that mother flower into you with all your might. So if I see a knife on you, that's the first thing that I'm going to attack. I might fake for your weapon, but I will absolutely grab your knife the first chance I get and use it against you. So that's, that's the reason why you wanna have it camouflaged in with your kit as much as possible. And a lot of guys, when they are running a plate carrier, I'm not gonna put it on because I just like, I'm lazy, but a lot of guys when they're running a plate carrier will keep it right in this pocket here. But again, you wanna make sure that it is camouflaged in with your kit enough. That's why the plate carriers usually have a pocket here or a mag pouch, like a taco mag pouch built in. They keep it real nice and hidden within here. Not that it's like if you were really looking for it, you couldn't see it. But if you were just looking a person up and down, you might not notice it at first. And again, that's why we, I chose a sandy color belt with a sandy color knife, right? Because it does camouflage in very well. And again, if you were really grilling me, you would more than likely notice this. But if it was just, oh, I came into the room, you pin my rifle, now we're fighting. Next thing you know, this is in your throat. That, that's kind of what I'm going for there. And I keep it here again um, because I can access this pretty much no matter what's going on. Even if I'm on my stomach, I can still reach down and get this out and into the fight. So I'm not saying that this is the way you need to do it, right? Obviously, like, you do what you want. But another drawback of having a knife back here is if somebody sneaks up behind you, what, that's the first thing they're going to do, right? They're going to take your knife out of your scabbard, put your head back, and fucking poke you in the liver, man. Like, or whatever. You're, you're done. You're done. If you don't see them and you've got your knife back here, they're going to use that weapon against you, right? And that happens. A lot of the times what we do in like security or, or whatever, sentry duty, like hanging out, if we have our battle belt on, um, <laughs> we're, we're hanging out, right? Maybe we just, maybe we're looking down at our phone and whatever happens, happens, and somebody takes that and they use it against us, right? It's harder to get a pistol out of its holster, especially when it has retention. But I don't know of any knife scabbers that have like an active retention system on them. I'm sure they exist. That's pretty cool. But I, I just haven't seen any. So I would be very cautious about putting your knife back there. I would always make sure that it's somewhere where we can retain it, right? Where we can put active retention on it if we need to. If somebody does attack our weapon, we need to be able to actively retain that weapon. So that's why I put, for my battle belt personally, I like to have my knife right about here. Some guys, uh, if you're a law enforcement guy, if you're a cop, or even armed security, I know some guys like to push daggers that they can put behind their mag pouches. I thought that was a great idea. I remember when I was a firefighter EMT, um, one of the cops that we were training with, he was, we were doing a bleeding control or something. And it was, we were, we were training how to take, like, take a cop's gun from them when they're unconscious, right? And no one really saw this, but I thought it was cool. Um, he was pretending to be unconscious, 
and we were like all oh, learning how to take you know take the the gun stuff off them all of a sudden he he like sits up and pulls out this push dagger from his mag pouch and i thought that that was very james bond so ever since then i've been a big fan of that um there's other places we can hide the knife just be creative right and especially the push daggers i'm a big fan of push daggers obviously it harkens back to the old um gutter fighting oss days fairburn was big on that it was a, a lapel knife that they had or a sleeve knife that they could just get out and bring into the fight real quick excellent excellent idea and i think that you can still buy those i forget who makes them otherwise i'd give a shout out but look for like sleeve daggers um lapel daggers google it i'm sure you'll find it and um i think that that's about it now as far as like a bayonet i think what we'll do is we'll talk about um i think we'll talk about that on a separate video i'll show you my like fighting loadout my minuteman kit this is the battle belt and the plate carrier tend to go together and then if i'm doing something like trucking through the woods with a rucksack i'll tend to have more of my um my h harness type deal on but so bayonet um, is a little bit different. I'm gonna set that up a little bit differently, but we'll talk about that. And then we'll go into how to set yourself up for um, deep concealment with concealed carry and uh, regular civilian clothes, regular civilian gear in the next video. What I'm intending on doing is making a separate video to go along with this and showing you guys some active retention drills. I'll show you how to retain your gun and when somebody's grabbing for it and bring your knife to bear, you know, if applicable. And again, just because somebody's going for our gun doesn't necessarily mean that deadly force is force is like the best idea. Is it legally justified? Perhaps, perhaps not. But again, if you know this person is unarmed, you know they're weaker than you, you know they're just like mentally unhinged, um, there's so many more things we can do than stab them in the throat with a knife, right? But if it is the type of thing where you're at your security, right? Let's just say you're armed security and you're, you're clearing a room and somebody then jumps at you and you're fighting for your life for your pistol, then that might be, that might be the option that you need to go with. But I just want to throw that out there is that as warriors, we have to be morally justified as well as legally justified, right? We can't just go doing whatever we want. There are consequences to our actions, and if not with legalities, then with karma, right? So a warrior needs to be, if we have the moral high ground, then we can lose no battle. Until next time, guys, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Like comment, subscribe, and share the video if you found it useful. GutterFightingSecrets.com is the website. I will train you on hand-to-hand -hand combat, direct download, very easy, and I'm honored to be able to do that for you. And uh, we've got great knife defense videos, knife fighting videos. I'll show you how, show you how to remove sentries, a little gutter fighting method. You guys will love it. GutterFightingSecrets.com is the website, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, one day.